chapter 12. Get your Bibles open in Proverbs chapter 12. At ganito po ang sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos in Proverbs chapter 12. You have your Bibles with you? Babasahin na po natin ang Proverbs chapter 12. Okay. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. Sa po po. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. Medyo kahawig to nung last time na ating uh, diniscuss about a wise man loving rebuke. But this morning, this is about never hating reproof. Never hating reproof. Sabi po dyan, He that hated reproof is brutish. The word brutish means resembling or befitting or typical of a brute. or beast. Hello, Brother Joey Juliesa. Good morning. Yan. Teka, baka may mga namimit. pa ako eh. Oh, si Brother Erbino Baluyot. Good morning. Alright. <laughs> Ang husay ko daw umawit. <laughs> si ano talaga. Evangelist talaga. Ay. Salamat sa Panginoon. Naka-join ka sa amin. Pastor June Pasis. Good morning. At of course, ang uh, mama ni Brother Jojo Baluyot, si Mami Ederlinda Poblete. Okay, let's continue. So, ito po, yung word na brutish, sabi sa ating key text, refers to those people who are hating reproof.
And the word brutish simply means animalistic or like a wild animal. So kung ipapalit po natin yung ating definition doon sa sinabi ng Bible this is how it will read he that hated reproof is animalistic or like a wild animal so we have a choice today to be like a wild animal or to be like Christ. You see, all humans will either degenerate or regenerate. When a person is born again, he was regenerated. A new life was brought in by the Spirit of God. And that would start his walk to be like Christ. However, he that hated reproof will continue to degenerate. His soul will remain in darkness like a wild animal in the jungle. Reproof is very important word in the Bible, much especially in the book of Proverbs. It appeared 17 times in the entire Bible and 14 times of that are found in the book of Proverbs. That should reinforce the fact to us that if we would be wise or having the wisdom of God, we should never hate, hate, reproof. Never hate reproof. You see, hating reproof is not beneficial to human soul. Yung ayaw mo na pinagsasabihan ka, ayaw mo na parang napapagalitan ka, o napupuna ka, o naitutuwid ka, naitatama ka, at ayaw na ayaw mo na napagsasabihan ka. That is not beneficial to your human soul. Kasi sabi ng ating key text eh, if we will be like that, if our attitude would be hating reproof, we will be like wild animals. And we don't want that. Especially if you are in Christ, if you are uh, saved, if you have trusted your soul to Jesus Christ, you should not be like a wild animal. You should be like Christ. You should not degenerate because you are already regenerated. But some people, that's the kind of life na ipinamumuhay nila araw-araw. Hating reproof is not wise. Never hate reproof. Let me show you from the Bible four reasons four major reasons why we should never hate reproof. Number one, because reproof is God's way to give us His words. God's way to give us His word. Ang salita po ng Diyos ay punong-puno ng reproof. Pinagsasabihan tayo ng Diyos. Pinaalalahanan tayo ng Diyos. Ang salita ng Diyos ay para tayo ay sansalain, sawayin, sabihan. So we should never hate reproof because it is God's way of giving us His Word. Sabi po sa Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, Turn ye at my reproof, Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Turn at my reproof, sabi ng Panginoon. 
I will pour my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So, sa unang pakinig pa lang natin ng salita ng Diyos at tayo ay na-offend na at tayo ay nagalit na at tinalikuran na natin ang pakinig ng salita ng Diyos, how would God give us His words? Importante po na nabibigay sa atin ng Diyos ang kanyang mga salita para tayo ay mabigyan ng direction. Tayo ay mabigyan ng ng, ng tamang gagawin natin. And this leads us to our second point. We should never hate reproof because it is God's way to give us His words and it is God's way to guide us in the way. To guide us in the way. Reproof is guidance. Oho. Kung kayo lamang ay makikinig sa salita ng Diyos, hindi nyo na kailangan ng guidance counselor. <laughs> hindi nyo na kailangan pumunta sa mga psychiatrist, sa mga psychologist. Ha? I know, yung mental health issues is real. And the struggle is real. And it's not just spiritual Uh, human condition na parbagang ang problema nito ay sa, sa pang-spiritual lang. Hindi. Yung mental health issues na yan, uh, it covers all the facets of human life. Mapa-emotional, mapa-financial, mapa- mismo nga physical, biological, or spiritual. At hindi natin sinasabi dito na pagka meron kang mental health issues o yung mga sinasabi nilang depression o kung ano-ano man sa kalungkutan ng tao, ay eh, ikaw ay backslider at ikaw ay hindi right with God. But, the Word of God, His reproof, will give us guidance so we can find our way out from darkness to light kailangan po natin ng reproof para hindi tayo maligaw ng landas kasi kahit naman mga kristyano na tayo kailangan pa rin natin na sumunod sa guidance ng Panginoon yan ang sabi ng Bible trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge Him And He shall direct thy paths. Yung iba akala yata sa salitang acknowledge ay yung uh, Hello Lord, good morning, I'm here, here na me, where na you? Baka akala nyo ganun yung acknowledging sa Panginoon eh. Hindi. Eh, pag sinabi mong you are acknowledging God, ibig sabihin, you are giving Him the authority even to correct you, to instruct you, to reprove you. And how will God do that? By the preaching and teaching of His Word. Through the man whom God has called to be your pastor, to be His under-shepherd, you are being reproved. Napagsasabihan ka, napapaalalahanan ka, napapangaralan ka, tapos galit ka. How will God guide you? Remember, we should never hate reproof because it is uh, God's way to give us His Word and it is God's way to guide us in the way. You want to be in the way of life? Ito po ang sabi ng Bible. Proverbs 6.3 For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 17 He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction but he that rep refuseth reproof eret pag tinatanggihan daw po natin yung reproof mali tayo niyan ala natin lagi tayong tama kaya ayaw nating napagsasabihan pero ang sabi ng Bible pag ang tingin mo sarili mo lagi kang tama at ayaw mong napagsasabihan the truth of the matter is ikaw ay nagkakamali you are erring by just re refusing to be 
reprove. So, sabi sa Proverbs chapter 15 verse 31, The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. This leads us to our third point. God's way to give us His word. God's way to guide us in the way. And God's way to grow us in wisdom. This is why the Bible is full, full of reproof. And the book of wisdom, Proverbs, out of 17 times the word reproof was mentioned in the Bible. In Proverbs, it is mentioned 14 times. Gaano kahalaga yan para tayo ay maging wise? Para ulit-ulit-ulit-ulitin ng Diyos sa aklat ng karunungan. Reproof! 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 Paulit-ulit sinabi ng Diyos in the book of wisdom. Why? Because reproof help us to grow in wisdom. Are you growing? Importante po sa isang anak ng Diyos ang growth, ang spiritual growth. At kahit na sa outside world, they know if you are growing. They know if you are improving. They know if as a person, you are developing into a better you. Pero tayo mga Kristiyano, we're not just after to become a better version of ourselves. Kasi we want to be the best version of ourselves for God's glory. Amen? For the kingdom of God. Yan ang dahilan bakit may mga reproof sa Bible. And we should never hate reproof kasi it grow us in wisdom. Sabi po ng Bible, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How can we grow in grace if we hate it? Reproof. Ah, dinig mo pa lang si Pastor, medyo tumataas ang boses, medyo tumitigas ang pangaral. Medyo nagiging karne. Ayan na, ayan na si Pastor. Tamaan na naman tayo, pariringan na naman tayo. Ang sakit-sakit ha. Eh, alam nyo, minsan ang hirap po sa mga Kristiyano. Ang gusto nating menu, ang gusto nating kinakain natin lagi, yung matatamis, yung malalambot, yung mga talagang sa ating taste buds, malas at masarap. Pero ang spiritual food po ng Panginoon, hindi lahat malas at masarap. Kung magbabasa kayo ng book of Jeremiah, sabi niya, Thy words have I found and I did eat them. At ang sabi niya, ang lasa, bitter. Pero, nung bumaba na sa kanyang stomach, sa kanyang buong pagkatao, sabi niya, ah, masarap pala. <laughs> Kailangan po natin ang salita ng Diyos to reprove us. And the pastor, I do not believe the pastor can preach a whole year of sermons nang hindi siya gumagamit ng reproof. Sapagkat kung hindi, aba, maghanap ka ng ibang pastor. Kasi tungkulin ng pastor yan eh. Sabi, preach the word, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Oh, di ba? Hindi ako may sabi niya na. Kaya, even here sa ating uh, hope, heeding on Proverbs every day, Baka ang ibang expectation eh, ito'y dahil devotional lang, ay puro pat on the back, puro uh, pagpabigay sa inyo ng uh, makakagaan ng inyong kalooban. We would like to do that. And the Word of God has a lot to offer to, to lift up our souls. But sometimes we need to understand, kahit na anong encouragement, kahit na anong exhortation, kahit na anong pag-lift ng soul ng isang, ng isang tao, kung hindi siya, if he will not get right with God,
he will never be encouraged. He will never be uplifted. Dead sa kanyang kalagayan. He will never grow in grace. So, kailangan po natin na mahalin ang pangangaral. Mahalin natin ang reproof. At mahalin natin ang mga ngaral na nagre-reproof sa atin. Kasi ginagawa niya ang kanyang tungkulin. Hindi niya uh, binabutter up. Hindi niya sinisweeten to taste ang kanyang pangangaral sapagkat gusto niyang sumunod sa Diyos at gusto niyang ikaw ay mapaayos. To get in line with the will of God. So why we should not hate reproof? Because it is God's way to give us His word. It is God's way to guide us in the way and it is God's way to grow us in wisdom and in grace. And last, it is God's way to gear us up for warfare. Are you listening? It is God's way to gear us up for warfare. You know why God wanted us to grow in grace? You know why God wanted us to mature in the faith? Because there's war going on. And He needs soldiers for Jesus Christ. And you cannot be a good soldier of Jesus Christ unless you know how to endure hardness. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul kay Timothy sa 2 Timothy chapter 2, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Why? Because there's warfare going on. There's war going on. And the war is between light and darkness, between good and evil, between God and the devil. And we are the church. And the church should be marching on to victory. Hell should never prevail against the church. But rather, we should be attacking and pulling down every stronghold tayo dapat yung nasa winning end. Kasi our Lord Jesus Christ has already won against the devil. When he was crucified on the cross, when he shed his blood, the devil had fought, oh, natapos na. Napatay ko na ang kalaban. Hindi niya alam that he would rise again. <laughs> that our Savior would resurrect. That's why on the third day, lo and behold, all the demons of hell and even Satan could not stop the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that was the time that the prophecy was fulfilled. 
natatapakan ng ating Panginoong Jesus ang ulo ng Diablo. That's right. It happened already. Tapos na ang laban. Tagumpay na ang Panginoong Jesus. And so, what the devil is doing right now is he's bringing the battle to us. Nung hindi niya natalo ang captain of our salvation, ang gusto niya, ang lupigin, tayo na mga naligtas sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya kay Jesus. That's why if you will not grow, if you will not be guided, if you will not receive the word of God being preached and taught to you, you will not be geared up, you will not be prepared, you will not be equipped for warfare, and you will become losers. Ayaw natin yan, di ba? Ayaw natin maging loser. We should be victorious in Christ. Paano yun? 2 Timothy 3.16 sabi, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction. Yan po ang sinabi ni Apostle Paul. Kaya po ang salita ng Diyos ay pinapangaral to geared us up for warfare. Pastor, nasa ng warfare dyan? Eh, ang sabi sa verse 17, that the men of God may be perfect, mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, good works ang pinag-uusapan dyan, Pastor, hindi warfare. Listen to me. The, 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 the writings of the Apostle Paul to Timothy, basahin mo from chapter 1, bago mo sabihin sa chapter 3 na pang good works lang. And I will explain to you what good works is that. Pero sa chapter 2, sinabi niya, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. If you are a child of God, if you are a Christian, you are part of the army of Jesus Christ. You are a soldier. And that's why He has allowed us to go through a lot of trials so that our endurance, huh? we will become stronger equipped better prepared that that's the word thoroughly furnished means complete and well equipped the word equipped means you have all the tools and skills you need to fight the devil head on to resist the devil so that he will flee from you Hindi ang kristyano ang dapat tumatakbo sa jablo, Ang jablo ang dapat tumatakbo sa atin. Hindi tayo dapat victim. Dapat tayo ay victor. Alam na alam natin dapat na hindi tayo dapat nalulugmok at nanlulumo at nanlulupaypay at nagiging talunan. Dahil lamang sa mga sirkomstansya at mga na nangyayari sa buhay. That is why you should never hate reproof. Because reproof is God's way to gird us up, to equip us for warfare. So that in this war against the devil and his legions, we will be able to do good works. Yon ang ibig sabihin nun. Na sa pagiging sundalo mo ni Kristo, sa kabila na ikaw ay nasa labanan, ang iyong ginagawa ay mabuti. May mga sundalo kasi na pag nasa labanan, hindi mabuti ginagawa eh. Hindi equipped to every good works. May mga sundalong abusado. May mga sundalong natutulog sa pansitan. May mga sundalong wala, parang... Sabi nga ay eh, nakakahiya at nag-uniforme pa sila. Di ba? At ganyan din ang mga Kristiyano na sundalo ni Kristo. Nakakahiya na tayo ay naging sundalo pa ni Kristo. Kasi lagi tayong luhaan, lagi tayong duguan, lagi tayong lugmok, lagi tayong talunan. Tuwi na lang ko, kumustahin ka ng pastor. O kapatid, kumusta na? Eh, pastor, pasensya na po. Hindi ako makapunta sa gawain kasi napakarami kong problema. Yan yung pastor, pag wala na akong problema. 
mag involve na ako sa gawain. Anong ibig mo sabihin? Kami ba ng mga involved sa gawain, walang problema? Ano ibig mo sabihin? Kami ba ng mga aktibo sa gawain sa church? Walang problema? Meron din. Yung problema mo, problema din namin. Pare-parehas lang tayo ng kinakain at pinoproblema. Pero may mga kristyano, may mga anak ng Diyos na tumibay at handang maglingkod at gumawa at gumanap sa gawain ng Diyos to every good works. Why? Because they have been equipped for warfare. Because they have received instruction, they never hated reproof, at sila po'y nakikinig na mabuti sa bawat pangaral ng salita ng Diyos. They never take it personal. Hindi sila mga balat sibuya sa pangaral ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya, uh, let me just give you this uh, encouragement. Whenever the Word of God is being preached, receive the engrafted Word. word which will be able to make you wise. This is Pastor Jess Marasigan for our Healing on Proverbs every day. Tandaan po ninyo, as life goes on, hope goes on. And whatever you're experiencing right now, heartaches, pains, hold on. Pain ends. Just keep believing and trust in the Lord. If you have not received Jesus Christ yet as your Savior, This is the better time to do it. Today, if you will hear His voice, if God is speaking in your hearts, then trust Jesus Christ. Embrace Him to be your Lord and Savior. Have a great God day. God bless.